What's happening, people? Back with another reaction, back with some more Bad Religion, and we're going back to one of my very favorite albums of all time, and the very first Bad Religion album I ever heard, and we're going to listen to the very first Bad Religion song I ever heard. That's right, we're talking Suffer, and the first tune, You Are the Government. I do want to mention, as I went to do this reaction, and it's just, I think of it almost every time I think of the album Suffer, when I first got this, which would have been like 94, 95 maybe, um, the first thing that stood out to me is the cover, which is not here, but it is up on the wall over there. <clears throat> to me, it's like the most punk rock image that has ever been put on an album cover in the sense that there's a, you know, sort of Tim Burton, Edward Scissorhands, um, very uh, suburban utopia slash conformity landscape, uh, maybe dystopia from another point of view. Um, and then into that strides this kid in a bad religion shirt on fire with a defiant stance. And there couldn't be any more clear, like, visual indication of the sort of philosophical, socio-cultural take and sort of attitude that Bad Religion was bringing uh, to their music and to the world. So, um, to this day, I, I think it remains the most punk rock image I've ever seen, and I think it's a real... Um, testament to what the band was about to do. Now, I suppose it could be seen as controversial. Again, their Crossbuster logo, you know, for a lot of people it will always be offensive, but um, I think it's making a bigger statement um, than just that part of the image itself. So I always really enjoy the cover of the album. Uh, we're gonna listen to You Are the Government. It's amazing. Like, number one, when I discovered this band, the sound was incredible. I love Greg's voice, and I also was like, okay, so this is like punk rock lyrics on a more like poetic sort of like philosophical level that I've seen before and what I enjoyed most is like songs like this it's like a minute and maybe 20 seconds it's crazy short which again fits perfectly like melodic 80s hardcore like part of which they help sort of establish um you say what you're gonna say and you get out the door it's you know that is very standard but it's amazing to me there's like 10 lines in the song it's a very short um set of lyrics for a tune and yet it says a whole lot. I mean, okay, so we're talking about, there's there's a hint of conflicted progress, which obviously they will talk about in more detail and more extensively in the song progress, but already it's talking about the way that like, as progress rolls along and it's trying to vindicate things, but that means eradicating things, like you're removing old fashioned antiquated things, which can have painful human consequences. Um, it's also talking about the, what is it, the, the Protestant work ethic and the capitalist spirit, or I think I might be mixing up the words, it's Max Faber, um, you know, one of the people who sort of uh, founded what we now call some of the social sciences, along with Von Ronka, he was like, in, uh, Von Ronka, sorry, he was involved in sort of formalizing like history and again, some other social science disciplines. And he had this idea that like, the, the work ethic evident in like Northern European Protestant, Protestantism encouraged those citizens to work more in the secular world, which created more economic activity, which led to more economic prosperity, and eventually that sort of became the dominant like economic, socio-cultural, religious paradigm in like Western Europe and North America. Um, and so the argument uh, in the song is that basically like, as this is playing out and the government is trying to direct your attention to you know national iconography like old glory and to sort of um keep you focused on th certain things the reality is you know there are problems there are difficulties and it's only when they get so extreme and so undeniable that maybe some amelioration will take place um, which is to say like you know the moral fabric of the country it dies because it's not really you know, living up to the rhetoric um, that is talked about. It's just, again, sort of like, you know, a flag, an, I, uh, an icon, iconographic um, artifact. That's the word I'm looking for, the phrase I'm looking for. Um, and then it even makes reference to, despite all of this, we are the government, right? Like, in this system, you have a vote, and I have a vote, and you can propose an amendment or, like, a proposition to be voted on, and we can join community groups and activist organizations, and we can ultimately try to manifest what we would like to see in the world. And at the end, there's a line, and I make a difference too. And I, like, I've always wondered, you could sort of take that two ways. You could take it as a more general statement that, like, look, in this sort of democratic system, you know, and you can say whatever you will about, you know, how authentic or legitimate that is, but you have a vote and I have a vote, so I make a difference too and you make a difference too, and you know, when all the votes are counted, we'll see, you know, what policies come into play, we'll see where this all ends up. But I also think about the song The Answer, because he has that, you know, like, 
the there's a line in that song that like I've got ideas too. Um, you know, you're trying to sell me on this all-encompassing. It's going to fix all bad things, and it represents all good things. And you believe it totally, and you're trying to sell it to me. Well, like, look, I got ideas too. I've studied too. I you know I try to figure things out. So in that context, it felt like a, a repudiation that like, no, you know what, take your answer, take your all fixing everything perfect idea and keep it because you know what, I'm going to keep trying to figure things out on myself or by myself. And that line, like, and I make a difference too. I've always wondered, is it like, is he saying that like most people are kind of running in a direction that is very different from what maybe more pensive and considered people like Greg Raffner wanting. And again, that takes me back to the image of the cover, this idea that like, sure, prosperity, sure, like work ethic, sure, like national iconography, but guess what? Like I have ideas too, I make a difference too, and I'm not necessarily gonna go along with that, and I'm not necessarily gonna, you know, be part of this like um, weathering of the moral fabric of the nation um, because you know instead of caring about actual people we're just trying to like yes progress and American technology um, so yeah there's so much going on in this song despite the fact that I swear it has like 12 lines so I've talked like three times as long as the song because I think it's about a minute and 20 seconds so I'll shut up now as I run over my teacup all sorts of crazy shit is going on on Acid Techno Street, but let's get it. This is Bad Religion, You Are the Government, from their 1988 album, Suffer. <laughs> Like the 14 year old me, like, oh my god. Listen to this and given some commentary I've been given on Greg's voice over the different albums, you know, going back to 885, it's really scratchy and sort of raw, then going ahead to like the 2000s when he really starts um, pushing the like melodic, um, the melodic flourishes in his singing. I feel like this is sort of transitional. I, I hear more of the 8085 Greg, there's a bit of scratch, there's a bit of rasp, um, but again, there's a couple moments like consciousness. Um, where, is it consciousness? I'm trying to remember what line it is. But there's one line in that song where he kind of like, he really kind of pushes up and goes melodic for a second and it's sort of like, it's foretelling um, where he's gonna go more with his singing in the coming years and decades. So, really cool. Again, this album uh, will always be one of my very favorites. This song is always one of my favorites, but despite it being the first Bad Religion song I've ever heard, it's not my favorite on the album. I'd say When or Delirium of Disorder or maybe The Index Fossil. Um, I mean, there's so many good songs. Land of Competition. I've reacted to most of these already, I think. Um, I know Land of Competition for sure. I know when. That was like very early on. Which is, it's sort of annoying. Like, the very first Bad Religion reaction I did, when I basically didn't know what the hell I was doing with reactions, and I like, I didn't even, I couldn't get the CD to play on my computer, so the video's like 10 minutes long, because there's like five minutes of me like, uh, which like, if it happened now, I'd just like stop the video. You know what? I'm just gonna like redo this. Uh, but yeah, so it's annoying to me that some of the really greatest songs um, of theirs I did super early on and now they're like, it's sort of annoying to me that the videos are as sort of like um, raw or like um, novice as they are, at least, you know, as I've come to do videos now. So there might be a chance where I go back and do some like second look at some of those tunes like When um, and like I Want to Conquer the World. Um, on No Control, because again, I really do like some of those songs that I did early on, and now that I've sort of learned how to do videos better, and I've had more interaction um, with other punkers, uh, and other uh, people who have come here to uh, check out Bad Religion, shout out to Kim, I really do appreciate uh, when people um, who weren't necessarily, uh, who didn't gravitate to my channel because of punk rock, but who are who have since taken an interest. Um, so yeah, uh, I am curious. Um, 
or not I am curious, I am keen uh, to go back and redo some of those. Nevertheless, I will shut up now. Uh, do let me know what you think of this song. I will see you next time. Peace.